Hello and welcome to According to John. Today we have an amazing question that is so applicable for today. Kind of in the news a bit, huh? Or how about if you're standing at a line in a grocery store, you it comes time to pay. Or the gas station. <laughs> yes. Or the lumber yard. Or, or anything that you're trying to buy. Or <laughs> what does the Bible say about inflation? Amen. You know, when you gave me that title, I kind of drew a blank, except one passage in the New Testament, James 5 your money becomes worthless. So we'll, yeah. I'm sure we'll go down there. But I was drawing a blank. You brought out Old Testament. I'm like, duh. Right. And then you showed me, and I'm like, dude, Johnny gets five points. I'll take it in. From right. the start. <laughs> this is going to help our listeners. Five points coming out of the gate. Yeah. yeah. He earned it, man. This is good stuff. <laughs> it's going to give us a, a concept you know it's right like, oh what there's spiritual things behind mm-hmm. everything that's happening in our physical world right and it, when you understand the spiritual you know you shall know the truth and, and the, the truth, truth shall, shall set, set you free. free also it shows us that there's nothing new under the sun yeah, amen that's what i was going to say <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I am your host, John Westfall. This is my co-host, Pastor Duke Herget, the Duke Meister. And today we're going to talk about inflation. Is it in the scriptures? What does it look like? Obviously, from the intro, you can tell it's in the scriptures. It's nothing new. And what's real interesting as we go through this, uh, the Bible even says that God pays attention. Mm -hmm. And the people who have done this will pay. That comforts me. Yeah, I just want to see some heads roll. Yeah, and and they think they think they're they think inflation's tough now. Uh-huh. Wait until the inflation of God rises up. Yeah, and God doesn't settle his books every ninety days, but but gone. he does settle them. Yes, he is, and it's going to be hitting the fan soon. Oh, Klaus yes. Schwab says it is head of the World Economic mm-hmm. Forum. Klaus Snob is about to pay. <laughs> I mean, Schwab. Is about they will to pay. reap what they sow. Yeah. Woe to now, you rich men, how and weep your gold and silver are cankered, and your garments are moth eaten. You've laid up treasures on earth where moth and rust corrupt. They're going to pay. They're going to pay. But and it's in our face. And uh, Johnny's going to guide you through an a, a exhaustive, yeah. uh, not exhaustive, but a biblical yeah. pattern to understand there's nothing new under the sun. There's reasons behind what's happening. And there are spiritual reasons. Mm-hmm. There are violations of the word of God. Yeah. All, oh, I'm just so ready to jump ahead and talk about greed. And t- I know. I'm right. holding back. Hold I'm back. holding back. Because, okay. because there's some very interesting things that we have seen that have led to this. Yeah. That we didn't even, most of us never, I'm going to say most because there's some of us who have been plugged in for a while. Well, prophecy junkies, we could see it in the scripture. So yeah. we're looking for it and I don't yeah. like it, but I do understand it. But we can also see through scriptures, the process of bringing about inflation. Yeah. It's so crazy. Yeah. It's just a simple pattern. That's it really is. Well, hey, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, then we will get started. Brother, if you will open us, sir. Okay, let's pray. Father, please take the Word of God, apply it to the stuff that's in our face today. Give us wisdom, lift us above it. Lord, you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of sound mind. And I pray for our listeners to 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 uh, be enlightened by your Holy Spirit, to just go deeper and walk stronger and shine brighter. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. What does the Bible say about inflation? Uh, Inflation, first off, is not in the scriptures. Like the word itself, we don't see in the scriptures. It wasn't even in the English language (laughs) about 100 years ago. (laughs) Right. So as time goes on, you know, that's like when we talk about rapture. Rapture, the word rapture, you won't find in the scriptures anywhere, but it's there in context. Very clearly. Yeah, very clearly. So just so you know, inflation, even though it's not a common word or not a word in the scriptures, it is in context. Can't go to your concordance, look up inflation and find this. But the principle of inflation is clearly in scripture. And that's what Johnny's about to show you about right now. Yeah. So the context of of economic issues, uh, inflation is an increase, right? We see it's an increase in overall prices and a corresponding decrease in the purchasing power. Yeah. That's that's what inflation is. As as, boom! Quick explanation. Yeah, no more ten cent uh, almond joy candy bars. I enjoyed in my youth. I love almond joy. 
back in my day, five. Mounds don't. <laughs> uh, I do mounds occasionally. Yeah, I'm not a big mounds joy. guy, man. No, almond Joy was the best. The Almond Joy is the best. Yeah. They're not 10 cents anymore, though. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> Inflation, right? 50 cents to get five of them babies, <sighs> which which I did. Man, I remember my grandfather would give, he would he would send me to the gas station. Of course, and, and at the time, I would only be like six, seven years old. And he'd give me a gallon gas can for the lawnmower and give me a quarter to go put, to get a gallon of gas. And he said, and get yourself some candy. Yeah, for a quarter. For a quarter. <laughs> Those were the days, my friend. I thought they'd never end. <laughs> <laughs> and me and I remember I'd walk up there and at, and at six years, whoever went to the gas station at six years old on their own. But back when we were kids. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody did, yeah. Yeah. A lot more has raised other than inflation, huh? So <clears throat> during the times of inflation, money is worth less than it was before inflation hits. This is an obvious, it's a given, right? And even though the Bible doesn't use the word inflation, which we talked about, the concept is there and it, it exists in Scripture. And we're going to show you in Scripture, but we're also going to show you what God thinks of it. And so the example that I decided to use was when the Armenians attacked Israel during King uh, uh, Jehoram's reign. Bad guy. <laughs> you think? But see, that's that's going to be foundational. Yeah. Bad yeah. people <laughs> exercising greed, <laughs> ignoring God, mm -hmm. doing it our way, right. will economically always repeat the same right. pattern. Right. And Johnny, what, this is good what stuff. you see which is real interesting is you see a bad guy on the throne and you see extreme inflation for Israel. Mm -hmm. And you see, fell out. and what do we see in America? Bad guy on the throne. And for those of you who think I'm wrong for saying that about our current resident, you're asleep. Yeah. It's uh, pretty evident. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the handwriting on the wall. I mean, come on. He's a pedophile. Every he is. Don't, I'm not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny needs maybe, me, man. He needs maybe, me so bad. Maybe I should be done. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> I think our audience already has come to some probably pretty wise political uh, decisions on the resident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but kind of getting back into the biblical side of things. Um, look, I just exercised incredible wisdom this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am humbly proud of myself right now. John is exercising Holy Spirit restraint. I, it, 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 I have no power to restrain this guy, uh, but he does love Jesus I a lot. I do. <laughs> and uh, it's so obvious what's going down in, in our society. But I think as a nation, we're reaping what we have sown. You know, the, the blood of 63. It's million. come home to roost. It, it has. We've killed our innocent yeah. and then we release our guilty. And, uh, you know, we save the babies and kill, or we kill the babies and save the whales. It's so uh, we're, we got our, it's the society is mentally, right. uh, going back to Sodom yeah. tomorrow. They, as a matter of fact, companies are paying women now to have abortions, but the government is a, was it a $5,000 fine? If you touch an egg of an Eagle. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's insane. Yeah. But that's what happens when a society turns their back completely on God. Yeah. And it's happened throughout history. And the manifestation economically always shows up of a nation that forgets God. The nation right. forgets God shall be turned into hell. Uh, psalm, I think it's the eighth Psalm. So here we go. Right. Yeah. So what we're going to see here with King Jehoram is as the uh, capital city is being sieged there's going to be a lack of goods okay the, the, the marauding uh attacking army surround the city and they cut off the supply lines exactly supply line uh uh breakdowns and what's real interesting is we're not being attacked from the outside of our country it is our government the enemy is not without no it is within yeah. the enemy is our government 
that is attacking us and destroying us, which is, is real obvious because <clears throat> here we are, we're paying prices at the fuel pump, you know, uh, in New York, 520 a gallon, I think is where we're at right now. And we have the resident who is selling or giving <laughs> all of our strategic oil supply, giving it to China. Mm-hmm. Yep. Taking our reserves and giving it to China. Yeah. That's what you do when you don't love your country. You and then giving our globalism. money, giving our money to Ukraine mm -hmm. and then telling us that we're going to pay. We have to pay as long as the war is going on. This is not our war. Mm -hmm. And um, dude, I'm spending I'm, money that we don't have to protect people. The Holy uh, Spirit is really the border of Ukraine, but we don't secure our own border. The Johnny, whole, uh, I explained this to you a long time ago. Two plus two is five. five. I know. You got I know. I, I know. explained it to you. Look, look, look. Here I am restraining myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, mm, okay. So when we, <laughs> I got to get back on track with this podcast. This is a good podcast. It is. So the siege lasted so long in Israel, right? that a donkey's head sold for 80 pieces of silver and a cup of dove's dung sold for five pieces of silver. You better and explain the dove's dung thing. I am going to do that. In, I, I didn't get it. He had to do the study on this because he's more disciplined than I am. In, se <laughs> in Second Kings, so a donkey's head sold for 80 pieces of silver and a cup of dove's dung sold for five pieces of silver. And I had to research that because I'm like, Really, they're buying bird poop. I mean, you know, but it, but if you think about it, even if it is actual bird poop, uh, think about how the how our government is going is fining people that's collecting rainwater. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, yeah. th think about that just for a second, right? Uh, but dove's dung is a couple of things that it could be. There's 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 a lot of debate on what it is. It could actually be doves dung the the poop of a bird and they would use that for fuel or it could be a certain uh plant that would grow over there where the pods it would be, they call it a seed pod that actually looked like doves dung and so it's it which which would make sense because it's food yeah. that's one of the neat things just an aside here in when you see something in scripture that doesn't really make sense in our Western world, mm -hmm. uh, you can go back and, and research it out. And a lot of times, a lot of great uh, things jump out at you right. when you do that. This is one of those times when you do the research, you're still not quite sure. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. Like there was, there were so many different commentaries that were saying, so I'm just going to give you both of what I've seen, which is actual doves dung or the seed pod, the vegetation plant that looks like a, a yeah. the yeah bird the poop. droppings yeah the droppings either which which again if we're talking inflation we're talking hunger we're talking shortage of food it could easily be the plant it, 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 it whichever one it is it's something that is of, of almost like zero value but now it has value it has crazy value and you know it's interesting yeah because nobody eats the donkey's head yeah and yet they're they're but if you're desperate, they're you desperate. Can skin it off and boil it down mm -hmm. and get the broth and mm -hmm. some scraps of meat. But I, I never thought of it till just now. I just had one of those aha moments as you spoke. Inflation, when it's really moving, the attention moves always towards food. Mm -hmm. When there's no inflation, you don't even think about food. It's just right. there. You're right. thinking right. about vacation and travel mm -hmm. and and a better yeah, and, car, but and, then when inflation hits, it's all right, about right. food. And those people that don't eat leftovers, they're going to start. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like legit. We got a problem coming and, and famine is at our door and we're seeing it over and over and over and over again in America. And we're also seeing governments. And what's crazy is not just the American government, but you have over in Germany and Italy and the Netherlands and all these places where that their government is telling them to only plant half of their crops and to destroy half of their livestock. And they are, they're rebelling. And if you just Google Germany rebelling um, uh, against food demands, Holland, all across Holland, Europe, 
Ukraine's not going to produce this year. You see, this is the globalist plan. Mm -hmm. Satan is guiding right. the globalist the, to starve out the people, mm -hmm. to reduce uh, the population. population, just exactly like they say. Yeah, so They're reduce keeping pop their word. Right, reduce population and absolute control. And, and here's what's real interesting. If we're going to talk about inflation and food, which obviously this is a big thing, and we're going to talk about it, some other things as well. But I was reading the other day where there's this, we have this new bug, this new insect, that if it bites a deer, the deer is dead within 48 hours. Yikes. And it seems to be targeting deer. Now... Where did that all of a sudden come from that our food supply in the wild is becoming less and less? Yeah, for those of us who are um, preppers and, you know, everything goes down, I can grow my own food. I can go out and kill turkeys and deer because I live out in the we, country. Yeah, we can hunt. But the enemy can take that away, too. Well, and that's what it looks like they're doing. And again, it's just the appearance that I'm seeing. The other thing that I'm seeing as well is our local lakes around the country are being it appears this way and you can research it on your own so you don't think that i've lost my mind or think that i've lost my mind more <laughs> whatever wherever you stand but it appears that they're also poisoning our lakes and killing off the fish I haven't checked that out, but I have been following very closely the water supply in Western United States, which is in serious trouble. And the mm -hmm. mainline media is not going to really warn you about that. Hey, Las, Las Vegas or Nevada, the, the entire city of Las Vegas right now literally is on short supply of water. I mean, I'm talking it's becoming life or death in and that lake mead is lake mead about, is almost gone yeah and that's their water supply yeah look and you guys can google this i mean look it up go to youtube lake lake mead uh is almost gone i mean you'll see the real video footage yeah, of we this. don't take any pleasure in this folks i just no. want you to know but we were warned by mm -hmm. our lord jesus yeah to, what to expect yeah right. and it is here so our money is losing its value uh, so much that our attention has almost diverted away from, oh, forget about the trips to Europe. Forget about the new car. I just want to make sure I got food on the shelf. Well, and this is going to get really ridiculous. So here we see that inflation is up. And, and the first thing that we read about with the inflation is food, shortages of food, 80 pieces of silver for a donkey's head that they never even would have been enter entertained before or dove's dung is insane. In other words, you're spending a fortune for nothing. They were reduced to simple survival. That's it. That's it. And so under those harsh conditions, King Jehoram, he was ready to give up and surrender, right, to Aram and what I find really interesting in that God intervenes, which I'm not going to get into all that. God intervenes. But what I find interesting is he blamed the whole situation on God rather than his own wickedness. Mm -hmm. The prophet brought it to his attention that it isn't God's <laughs> fault. And uh, he didn't buy into it. But um, there was a lot of innocent people suffering. Well, you know what this reminded me of when Jehoram blames God? It reminded me of last week. Or a week and a half ago, <laughs> when the resident, <laughs> I know what you're gonna when say. the resident blamed gas stations for the price of gas. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, listen. If if the gas station owner would lower the price of what they're charging at the pumps, it wouldn't be so high. And what most people don't know because they're ignorant, mainly because they don't study it out, they don't research, they don't look it up, or they get so stressed. And they're like, oh, I can't handle this anymore. And they just want to block it all out. Well, that's the proverbial ostrich. And you're still going to get your butt shot off if your head's in the sand. It's not going to change anything. <laughs> they're going to drop the prices of the pump for you because you got your head in the sand. And what people don't realize is gas stations at the pumps aren't even making 10 cents a gallon. It's, it's minimal. The resident was in error when he made that statement. Yeah. They, listen, gas stations make their money when you go inside and buy the goods inside. The pump just draws you to their store. That's all it does. And and even if they made 50 cents a gallon, and I'm telling you, if they make 50 cents a gallon, that's stupid uh, 
amount of money for them to make. It's not even close to that. It's not even close to that. And so, but even if they made 50 cents a gallon, uh, they got to pay insurance. They have to pay uh, to get it there. They have to pay delivery. They got to pay employees. They have to pay the light bill. They have to pay property tax. I mean, they have all this. They're not making anything. And so for the resident to say that, it reminds me of Jehoram blaming God. Yeah, blame shifting. That's That's all it is. Yeah. When Jehoram was the wicked one that brought on the the inflation. Mm -hmm. Man. All right. Anyway, so we see here in 2 Kings 6.33, and while he was still talking with them, there was a messenger coming down to him. And then the king said, surely this calamity is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? (laughs) I'll take matters in my own hands. I'll blame the gas station guys. I'll blame Putin. I'll blame Trump. <laughs> Think about yeah. all of this, right? Yeah. It, the, the blame shifting for this inflation is crazy. When in reality, the resident shut down immediately. As soon as he got in the office, first thing he did was shut down our pipelines. In minutes. It was down. Down. And we were, we were the largest producers. Yeah. And he shut us down. Yeah. Which killed jobs, killed the, the, see, our fuel and and... And, ki- and started the process of killing our country. Yeah. See, the difference is the former resident, uh, Donald Trump, was a nationalist. He wanted America you, The to former be, president. Yeah. I think he still is the elect, duly elected president. Yeah. Because yeah. we'll that's, why, that's why the one who's in there is a resident. Yeah. I, I hear you. And, and, the, and the one who was in there was the president. Yeah, he and he was duly elected again. In my view, that's another that's another another podcast. podcast. But the thing <laughs> exposing is, Oz, <laughs> Trump is a nationalist. <laughs> he's he was looking out for the good of a country, energy independence. He was fix the supply lines, uh, open things back yeah, up. Yeah. He 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 was resisted the whole COVID lockdown. Mm-hmm. He was framed by uh, so many people. But now the president or the the current resident, current resident, resident. Mm-hmm. is a globalist he's trying to so weaken america that's why you give away a third of your military well he even said he and you guys can google this again i'm, I'm we're just giving you information that is out there if you want to take the time to look but he even said this duke he said that these prices and this condition will continue the way it is until the war in ukraine is over and the new world order has been settled and in. That's what he said. We must lead the way mm-hmm. into the new world order. He is a complete globalist. And he said these prices will stay that way until the new world order is put in place. Now, since we're already chased this rabbit, I'm just going to take it another uh, hundred yards here. Take it three hundred, dude. There's <laughs> a, a, a tremendous pushback now across the world across towards the world, yeah. globalism, and they've lost a lot of ground. Our Supreme Court is making some decisions against uh, the globalist view, and uh, I've always you know, we always wonder at. How far will the Lord allow things to go down before the rapture of the church? Correct. We know evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But how much will the Christian, the church of Jesus, have to suffer mm-hmm. before he returns to deliver us from this present evil world? And we do not know the answer to that. But what's happening right now looks like th- this thing could be pushed back for a little while. If that's God's sovereign choice, I'm okay with that. But if he just lets it fall off the edge i'm okay with god I'm okay with that yeah because his timing is perfect and his agenda is wonderful and no matter what ha- who is if the resident continues or is goes down or die whatever we win in jesus right well and here's what's real interesting guys you have to pay attention to these next few statements that that we're going to make so we understand looking at scriptures that is uh that inflation has been around for a long time it comes for reasons mm-hmm. and it goes for reasons. And here's what we see by scripture, through scripture, right? That scripture shows it is exacerbated by war. It's a disruption of supply chains and lockdowns. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's what we see through scripture. And through history. And through history. And if you look, what did we just go through? 
exacerbated by war. This will, these prices will continue until Ukraine wins the war. Not even our war, but we're going to pay the price for it, right? Or how about this? Hey, guys, the supply chains are breaking. Have you realized this? Trucks are not getting to the stores and things aren't getting on the trucks and there's not enough things to put on the trucks for the trucks to get to the stores. The supply chain is disrupted right now massively. And what did we just come out of a year and a half ago, lockdowns. This is all a process to bring in this inflation. And then there's another factor that contributes to uh, that contributes to inflation. I like the word contribulate. <laughs> it's in the dictionary. I was going to have to leave it in there now that you pointed it out. Oh, sweet word, Johnny. I was going to cut that. Excellent communication. I was going to edit out contributes, but. We're going to leave it in the dictionary. Great. It's a great word. I love it. So another factor that contributes (laughs) (laughs) to inflation is greed. Greed. There you go. So that's how do we see greed? Well, it takes the form of price gouging, dishonest weights and measures, et cetera, which we're going to see in the scriptures. The scriptures talk a lot about honest weights and, and measures it, it or does. dishonest. Yeah. And when you have honest weights and measures, you have justice. You have a solid economic foundation for the economies right. to be to be stable. And you have a system that God can honor. Yeah. Because he's a just God. He's a just God. And what we see, though, is that the Bible repeatedly condemns dishonest gain. Deuteronomy 25, 13 through 15. You shall not have in your bag differing weights, a heavy and a light. You shall not have in your house differing measures, a large and a small. Do you notice, again, nothing new under the sun? People think that uh, if you go back in history in the in the old days of of the Bible or the beginning of Bible, like they were cavemen. Well, first off, cavemen didn't exist. That's a a theory of evolution. And so if you believe cavemen existed, you're believing in evolution, just throwing that out there. But dude, they were the same then that we are today. The only thing that changes are names, places, and faces, and sometimes the weather. Mm -hmm. That's it. But people are people, no matter where you go, they're, some that are honest and some that are crooks. When the spirit of God is upon a man, a woman, a culture, there's restraints from within, um, moral restraints to uh, be honest. I remember growing up, uh, we had a little farm store. Uh, We had a huge garden. We used to sell uh, sweet corn for 35 cents a dozen and every dozen had 13 years. Just in case, we called it a baker's baker's dozen. dozen. Yep. And the reason we did that is because what if maybe there was a a, a miscount or yeah, something like well, that? Not even yeah. a miscount. What if one of the one of ears was bad? Was bad. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll replace it right on the spot. Right. And so, boy, today used to be a, a big box of uh, uh, cornflakes, twenty two ounces, and now the same size box only contains eighteen ounces. Mm-hmm. That's not just weights and measures it's deception yeah it does say the exact weight in small print but still got the big box right a lot of error in that box Mm -hmm. well verse verse 15 says you shall have a perfect and just weight a perfect and just measure that your days now look listen this guys i'm telling you if you see what's going on today and you read the scriptures god is serious today just like he was back then he hasn't changed. He has not changed. You shall have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure, that your days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Yeah. You want blessing? Be godly. Yeah. You don't have so much to worry about who's who's uh, messing with you. Who's but if you're if, you. if you're a crook, don't worry about the the innocent getting you. God's going to get you. Yeah. Be sure your sins will find you out. Yeah. And then you have Proverbs twenty verse ten. Diverse weights and diverse measures, they are both alike an abomination to the Lord. Ezekiel 45.10, you shall have honest scales and an honest ephah and an honest bath. Now, the word bath, I had to look that up because I'm like, bath? Listen, I shower. (laughs) It's a measure of dry measure, isn't it? Well, it is a measure, and actually it is a measure that is 5.75 gallons 
Okay, so it's a liquid measure. It's a liquid measure. Five gallons. Right, gallon. which explains bath, because we get bath as in... Yeah, how about that? There you go. Etymology of the word. There you <laughs> One more point for Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> You're dragging some intellectualism um, into our emotionalism. Yes, yes. So uh, I, when I read it, it said 5.75 gallons to 5.81, but I'm not, it, whatever. It's, it's right, almost six gallons. Um, then we look in uh, Micah 6, 10 through 11. Are there yet the treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked and the short measure that is, in, that is an abomination? Shall I count pure those with the wicked scales and with the bag of deceitful weights? Mm -hmm. He's, I mean, obviously sarcastic question, question, right? Character comes out in commerce, doesn't it? It does. Mm -hmm. And, and we look at today, you know, with you were talking about, um, the cornflakes because if a dishonest, a dishonest measure, you pay $10 for 10 ounces, but the seller only gives you eight ounces, right? Then all of a sudden you went from a dollar an ounce to a dollar 25 an ounce. Uh, that is instant inflation and dishonest gain. Mm -hmm. Now we went to lunch last week after we podcasted and we get there and I get the, the food is excellent. I'm not even going to mention the restaurant because the food is excellent yeah. and, and everyone is doing this. I get it. Um, I don't appreciate it, but I get it. I don't accept it, but I get it. <laughs> and you'll call it out when necessary. And I did. Uh, so we order a lunch, and in this lunch, you get a piece of chicken. And the chicken comes out, and it's so thin that when they cooked it, it was hard on the edges and dry in the center. But they put enough juice over top of it to, for the flavor that, you know, and I called over the waiter and I said, hey, listen, uh, I just want you to know that I don't appreciate the fact that you have raised your prices and now you're, you're, you're literally giving me such a slim piece of chicken that you can't even cook it the way it needs to be cooked. You got to hide it in, in the gravy. And, um, and if you want my business to continue, you need to cut this a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. because I don't appreciate you charging me more and giving me less. Now, you thought about that afterwards. I was in the restaurant business for five years, John. <laughs> so tell me what you said earlier. Well, or tell the people. You know, I've... Because I'm going to refute it. <laughs> the, the thickness and the thinness is, is really secondary to the actual weight you know when you get yep. a quarter pounder at, at mcdonald's it's a, it's supposed to be uh four ounces now whatever they do that's between them and god but it's it, it you know when i was in the restaurant business we cut you know a 10 ounce ribeye 14 ounce ribeye yeah 200 pounds ounce. is 200 pounds if you're six foot 200 yeah. pounds or if yes. you're five five well, i always tell pounds. people what's what's heavier 100 <laughs> pounds of feathers or 100 pounds of meat everybody right. A uh, hundred pounds. No, it's the same. <laughs> it's the same. It's the same. So it could be, and I don't know because I don't know what the cutting or what the the weight rate, you know, what they want. How much chicken do they want? Do they want three ounces, four ounces, five ounces? But it was cut very thin, and it didn't cook properly because it was of too thin. Thinness, yeah. Right. And so that could easily be fixed. The cooking part of it by making it thicker. Mm -hmm. And I just just tell people, you know, just make it great and let me pay the price for it. Don't, right. Don't raise the price and lower the, the value. So the principle so, is the same. The problem that I had is I've eaten there several you times. Could, you could see that it was immediately yeah. when it came out and, and listen, I'm not, I don't eat. I mean, I eat obviously I eat and I can eat big, uh, but I'm not trying to get all I can get for nothing. And as a matter of fact, you were there and I was so gracious oh, yeah. in telling the waiter. And a great tipper and all the above. I, I still tipped him well and everything, but I, I had to share my thoughts because I've been there a multitude of times. And you could see the, the change. And I've never gotten a piece that thin. So that told me, and I understand inflation and they're trying to save, but it's also a perfect example of how you're getting charged more, but they're giving you less. And I know they're trying to survive, but don't cheat me. And that's what they were doing. And that's common 
practice right. in our culture. Yep. I grew up in a time when my grandfather, it was, we had a little roadside stand. He wanted to teach us commerce. He wanted us to be entrepreneurial, just little boys. We sold night crawlers. We sold minnows. We used to sing minnows in the creek and go night crawler hunting and sell them, sell vegetables. And, um, and he just drilled into us integrity. And, integrity. That's really what it comes down to. And he, he always said this. He goes, if you give people a little bit more than what they're paying for, you've got a customer for life. For life. Well, if we do it God's way, we would curb inflation. As a matter of fact, we wouldn't have the problems we have today. You know, uh, But I'm going to point out another thing about inflation and that global inflation is predicted to uh, occur during the tribulation. It's actually predicted to occur, occur just prior to the tribulation. Right. Absolutely goes bonkers in the tribulation. James chapter five. Mm-hmm. Aha, Johnny, let's go. get to my text. He right. sat All right. me All up. Right. Hold on, I'm going to pull it up right here. Johnny knows I love this. You going to turn me loose, John? Go ahead, right there. Well... <laughs> Uh, Come now, you rich, and weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches, economics, Mm -hmm. uh, are corrupted. Your your foundation for your economy is eroded. And he tells us why. And your garments are moth-eaten. You know, you got the high-end Gucci bags and all that. (laughs) Your gold and silver. I don't. Right. I I had a nephew that paid $257 for a pair of sunglasses (laughs) before I whooped his butt. Right. (laughs) Take a back. Your gold and silver are corroded, and your uh, corrosion will be a witness against you uh, and will eat against your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasures in the last days. Mm -hmm. The church church is still here an inflationary period is coming prior to the rapture of the church right. and there's a lot of reasons in this text when you want to unpack it 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 talks about uh you have you've murdered the innocent among you mm. do, does not even uh retaliate that's that to me is abortion that's a, yeah you're, you're killing the most yeah. innocent the abortion well it, it here's what it could be it can be abortion but it can also be the innocent in the world as far as like the worker bees the, mm-hmm. people get up every day right. go to work yeah. and 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 live within their means and work hard right. and pay their taxes and they're honest and have integrity they're the innocent that there's they're a killing lot as well. of them. there's a lot of praise them. god for yeah. that yeah but they're suffering under the horrific uh, government leadership mm-hmm. that's brought this upon them Yes. It's starving out the middle class, reducing people to poverty, well, which is the plan of the globalists. Because here's the, the, all right, no offense to anybody listening to this podcast if you're in one of the three groups that I'm about to talk about. You have the rich, the middle class, and the poor. Okay. The rich have the ability to keep taking the middle class is the majority of America that keeps America floating. The poor financially doesn't contribute. They're controlled. They're controlled. So if you get rid of the middle class, then all you have is the elite who only wants to be more elite. Revelation 13, that process will have. And you've taken exactly. you've taken over the country. And that's exactly what What's happening. Schwab yep. said they yep. plan to do. Get rid of the middle well, class. You'll, you'll all live in eight hundred square foot apartments mm-hmm. and and uh, high rise uh, apartment mm-hmm. buildings in smart cities. You'll own nothing, uh, and you will be happy. That's right. what he said. Right. Well, I won't be happy because I won't be here. But this is not a coinky dink. Right. This is a right. plan. Well, and verse four continues. Indeed, the wages of the laborers, the worker bees, mm-hmm. the, the good people, the 5,000 have not, or 7,000 haven't bowed their knee to bail, who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud. The people on top, fraud, using them. And which, which, by the way, we have a picture of verse 4 happening uh, in Germany and over in Europe where the farmers now have come out exactly. against the government uh, and they're going against them now. Just Go ahead. Exactly They're, like this. It's literally it's this verse. And they cry out. The cry out yep. is what we are listening mm-hmm. on the news. And the cries of the reapers 
have, oh, this is the good part, right. have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. God is watching. He's saying, hey, I told you this would come. It's here. It's close to the time of the end. Three times in this passage of Scripture talks in the time of the end, in the time of the end, in the time of of the end and we are living in those economic times as we speak yeah. jesus is coming soon and that is, guys you again you see it in scripture and then in revelation uh, 6 5 and 6 that we're going to see it during the tribulation as part of god's judgment on earth that's when satan has complete control of everything everything five and six says this when he opened the third seal i heard the third living creature say come and see so I looked and behold a black horse and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a, this is ridiculous because it says a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius. That's a day's wage. A denarius is a, a full you on all day for lunch. Yeah. For, for a meal. That's exactly what this is saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's during uh, the tribulation. Mm -hmm. That's after the rapture of the church. After the rapture. It is going to be horrific, but what you will see and what we see today is we see the luxuries are still available, but the necessities are becoming scarce. Yeah, the rich people have the luxuries. You know, I've been preaching this for 50 years, and people thought I had three heads. And mm -hmm. when I come back down, Pastor Duke, you're... Your uh, uh, what do you call us uh, conspiracy theorists? All that. Well, yeah. it's not. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but yeah. we do wrestle against principalities right. and powers. Satan right. has a plan. God told us what the agenda would be, and now uh, that Satan is tightening his grip mm -hmm. medically, tightening his grip educationally, tightening his grip economically, mm -hmm. where people are really feeling it. Yep. And now I'm I'm blessed to see such a resistance movement. We're mm -hmm. yeah, that really is a blessing. The resistance movement mm -hmm. is greater than what mm -hmm. I thought it would be. Well, the problem I have is the resistance movement is greater than what I thought it would be. But it's happening in other countries. It's Americans to, Americans have not woken lot, up yet. We're a lot more like sheep than what we, we, we thought. And, yeah, uh, we have lost our boldness. We have lost our, well, because we've lost our men. Now, let's, let's just be honest. America is probably the most homosexual country in existence right now. America is probably the most gay, LGBTQI, whatever country in America today. And it is destroying us from within. Our men have checked out. And, and what men didn't check out, they've checked into queer hotel. And, and it's just, I, I'm, t okay. So you're saying we're back to Sodom, huh? Yeah. Okay, listen, well, Duke. Said it. Duke, l listen. Listeners, listen. And I challenge you. I'm challenging you. And, and what really frustrates me is we're losing our country to a bunch of whiny, crybaby, feminist, feminine, what used to be men are now... And our public schools have taught them this. The public schools have caused them to question their sexuality. They're pushing it down their throat. Uh, I think there's a dietary and a medical and a vaccine element to the 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 testosterone level of men today. Do you know? I it's don't way down. Listen, I don't know if you realize this, and listener, I don't know if you realize this, but uh, like, uh, was it Polar Springs? The water Polar? I think it's Polar Springs. They put estrogen in their water. So all the bottled water that you're getting, that's Polar Springs water, has estrogen in it. There's a lot of that going on in the marketplace today where what you buy has estrogen. Why are they putting estrogen in our water and food supply? Because we got to feminize men. See, what we're looking at is many different... Um, man, I, I, didn't, I didn't do well on the restraining on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. Many, I'm just, it's so frustrating, yeah, Duke. But there's so many, you know, it, okay, we see it. The feminization of America. Well, it's in the school, it's in the water, it's in the, it's in the vaccines. Yeah. It, it, and I'm not talking COVID here. I'm mm -hmm. talking about all the other 73 vaccines that they expect my kids to get, grandkids to get in New York, which they're not getting. All More than 73. It's, it's like it's 150. Un it's unbelievable. And we're, we're, we've chosen not to go there. Mm -hmm. my, my grandchildren aren't aren't vaccinated that way they have selective vaccinations and they're very healthy but it's it's just 
a comprehensive system mm-hmm. from a comprehensive Satan right. to bring this about. So we come along, society sees one aspect of it, but our job as biblicists, our job mm-hmm. as a, a watchman on the wall to s- send forth a warning is, okay, you're seeing it. This isn't anything brand new. This right. has been happening for the last 40 right. years. Right. And so it's all culminating now, Mm -hmm. but it encourages me to see people waking up. But you know, it's like, no matter what you know, no matter what you share, the mainstream media tells uh, their dumbed down listeners that, well, anybody that's telling you different from us, they're just conspiracy theorists, they're just radicals. I wouldn't have a problem being called a conspiracy theorist if it wasn't for the fact that I'm out of conspiracies because everything I've said is truth. And not only, not only what we have said is truth, but dude, we're reading it in scripture now, like scripture. We are living in biblical times right now. Yeah. The time of the end, the, the birth pains have begun mm-hmm. and we're seeing it on so many fronts, but this, this podcast about, uh, inflation really is kind of the apex. It's kind right. of the culmination of all all these other things that have been societally designed right. to bring this about. Right. Oh, and, and that's exactly right. Because all the all the smoke screens, I'm going to use them as smoke screens. I love that term, Johnny. That's another point. That's six, seven that's points. That's seven. Dang, oh, man. I'm, I'm in a liberal I'm, mood today. <laughs> liberal but, and giving. But think sure about this. Everywhere else. <laughs> the smoke screens that are going on to cover up yeah. the process of bringing about the inflation and then covering up the actual inflation because there still are people who are like, well, hey, you know, we got to pay for the war. Or, hey, you know, we got to pay for this. Or, hey, you know, and it's like, are you, do you not see the corruption in this? And yet they're like, well, hey, I had one guy who said, uh, hey, it costs to be the boss. <laughs> Slide of hands, man. Look at this. And over over here. Yeah. Uh, and that, yeah. and that is what's happening. So like this whole abortion thing, that was a smoke screen. Mm-hmm. The timing of it, the leak, all the, all of it, yeah. all of it. You know, the, uh, it's all uh, about November. Gislaine Maxwell smoke screen. Yep. How about the trial with, uh, that actor? Who was he? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy, named, what the junk uh, was his name? Whatever. Uh, yeah. Smoke screen. But the whole focus. I just saw some stuff about this recently. The, the media is so powerful and, you know, they do the Ukraine thing and then you'll look on people's Facebook page and all of a sudden their picture is uh, overshadowed with a Ukrainian flag, mm-hmm. the different colors yeah. or uh, uh, smoke a couple, screen. Yeah. A, a couple years ago it was the Black Lives Matter thing. And obviously what a sleight of hands. Black Lives Matter to God, but the mm-hmm. organization is satanic. Mm-hmm. The organization is a communist yeah. organization. Yeah. People like yeah. emotionally, they're just sucked in and they got their picture and they got mm-hmm. their overlaid with the Black Lives Matter thing. And they're just trying to be, yeah. it's group thing. It's, it's just it's, kind of like what James said, right? Held back by fraud. Yep. And uh, they, they present something. People have lost their ability to think critically. They're emotional about stuff. But, about but all of that is a smokescreen that's brought us to where we are today. And they still use it to help us forget about yeah. inflation, yeah. which is killing, killing the uh, families. The crazy thing about Americans is all this horrific stuff happens and we just pass the bread you know mm-hmm. the baloney's been around america just tunes it out tunes it out but when well, they people, that pump and people still say oh we've been through this before we'll recover no you're not, not this we're not recovering this time uh, no, and i'm not wrong. being a doomsdayer i'm just following scripture the reality of inflation should remind all of us that riches are fleeting yeah. proverbs 23 5 Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Riches fly away, guys, I'm telling you. And then right now, I think all of us feel like the people in Haggai's day. In Haggai 1 6, it says, You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. I love that phrase, a bag with holes. That's inflation. That's inflation. And that's where we are today. And one, uh, our trust should be in something more reliable. It needs to be in God. Paul told 
Uh, Paul told the, the rich not to put their hope in wealth. 1 Timothy 6, 17. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. And really, people have made riches their God, and the rich think they are God, and they've brought inflation up. And now here's what's happening. They brought inflation up. And, and this, is the, this is the process, guys. They bring inflation up, and then those who can't afford it have to do what? they got to surrender everything they have. They surrender their land, blah, blah, blah. They become servants. And they become servants, and then, then inflation comes back down it goes back to a norm and the rich have the money to buy the land at pennies now and so now the rich get more because they created the inflation to rob the middleman of what they had mm-hmm. it's a ponzi it's, scheme it is it is and it's about ready to crash yeah listen matthew, matthew 6 19 through 21 whether you're rich or poor Uh, You can store up treasures in heaven. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. And then in 21, uh, and this is going to tell where you're at with God. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What are you trying to hold on to and protect the most? If it's your walk in God, then God is your treasure. If it's your stuff that you have in the closet and in storage, then your God is your things. Guys, listen, we have a sure hope. And the sure hope that we have is Jesus Christ. Make no mistake about it. Without Jesus, we have no hope and we're all condemned to live what Satan has put before us in the inflation. And Proverbs eleven twenty eight says this, he who trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous, the righteous will flourish like foliage. I pray that you are the righteous today. And I pray that you're not trusting in your riches because if you are, you're going down, you're going down like the Titanic, unfortunately. Hey guys, I hope that this helped you. And if it has, please like, share, subscribe, and follow. And until next time, God bless.